Welcome to Halftime Football, where in the third part of my eight-part series, I'll be previewing Group C of the World Cup. So getting right into it, and in Group C, we have one clear favourite and three other teams that are very close in ability, with Argentina, Poland, Saudi Arabia, and Mexico all involved. Let's begin by taking a look at the side who are not only the favourites for the group, but also seemingly the favourites for the whole tournament. Argentina expectedly eased through their qualification group, finishing second behind Brazil due to a few shaky draws, but other than that, they've looked excellent. They finally began performing in the big games, winning the finalissima this year with ease against Italy at Wembley, while in their solitary qualifying match against Brazil, they churned out a solid 0-0 draw. Argentina are also relatively fresh off a Copa America victory last year, where this generation finally showed that they can do it in the big games after prior heartbreaks in the same tournament. The man who obviously hogged all the spotlight from that victory was Argentina's talisman and the greatest ever, Lionel Messi, who's likely going to be very fired up ahead of what is likely to be his last last World Cup. Other forwards Julian Alvarez and Lataro Martinez will also be eager to prove themselves in Qatar, while the likes of Rodrigo de Paul will be the engineer in midfield. However, key players such as Angel Di Maria, who scored the winner in the Copa America final, as well as Paolo Dybala, both have fitness concerns ahead of the tournament, though both of the superstars have been included in the final squad. Crucial centre-half Cristian Romero has also been out in recent weeks, though he's still expected to start. Argentina will be looking to go further than their round of 16 exit to eventual winners France in 2018 18, as they look to bring the spirit of 1986 with them to Qatar. Lionel Messi's last dance has many anticipating Argentina as tournament winners due to what a fairy tale it would be, though only time will tell whether he and his team will either thrive or falter under such pressure. Now we move on to Poland, a relatively unpredictable team in any major tournament and a team who come into this tournament with suitably topsy-turvy form. Poland were placed in a qualifying group with England, which in itself would be difficult to automatically qualify out of, and they expectedly finish second second and were sent to the playoffs. There, they got a bye into the final due to Russia's expulsion and they ended up beating Sweden 2-0 to send them to Qatar, which should have been a major momentum booster. However, they looked horrendous in the Nations League this year against any opposition that's even slightly better than them, with a particular highlight being a 6-1 defeat to Belgium. Two victories against Wales gave them some reassurance, but things aren't looking too sparkly as of now. Nonetheless, Robert Lewandowski will look to be firing up front to get rid of his typical tournament demons with both Milik and Piatek behind him, while Wojciech Szczesny will be solid in between the sticks. Piotr Zielinski will look to be the main man in midfield, while Matty Cash and his newfound Polish roots will be bombing up and down the right flank. Goalkeeper Bartolomej Drogowski misses out due to a horror injury which he suffered while playing for Spezia last week, but Szczesny leaves Poland in very safe hands. Last time out in the 2018 World Cup, Poland finished rock bottom of a group they'd have been expected to do much better in as they picked up just three points, so they have a lot to prove this year. Manager Czeslav Mikniewicz will be looking to get his first major tournament underway in style despite his football being both dull and ineffective thus far, though in my mind there's no doubt that Poland have a very very tough time ahead of them. As for Saudi Arabia, while well, they'll be looking to qualify for the round of 16 for just the second time in their history, and hopes have been very very high since Air Renard was appointed in 2019. The Saudis qualify with absolute ease, losing just one game out of 18 despite having to face the likes of Japan and Australia in their campaign pain, and their form in friendlies as of late has proved that they have a formidable back line despite such a lack of attacking threat. Saudi Arabia have more than held their own in friendlies against Colombia and the United States, whilst also picking up wins against North Macedonia and Iceland lately. Some players who have been key to the recent Saudi resurgence include winger Salem al Dosari, who look to produce even more magic on the left, while Sultan al Ghanam and Yasser al Shirani provide a major threat as wingbacks. They are, however, without the speedy winger Fahad al Muwalad, who failed a doping test earlier this year and was hence dropped from the squad. Nevertheless, Saudi Arabia have a physically frail yet incredibly speedy and technical squad who could inflict a lot of damage on their opposition. They'll be looking to bounce back from a shocking 2018 campaign where two defeats in two games saw them the first team to be sent packing, and Air Renard appears to have corrected a lot of the defensive weaknesses on display in that tournament. Whether Saudi Arabia will progress out of this group through pure defensive might is another thing, but things look 
look a lot better for them this time around nonetheless. Finally, in Group C we have Mexico, a team who seemed to get a kick out of being disappointing in the big moments. The Mexicans, as always is the case nowadays, qualified for the World Cup with relative ease, finishing second in the CONCACAF group behind Canada on goal difference. However, while Mexico did look good in their qualification campaign, they've absolutely folded in half when faced with any sort of opposition of similar level in the past few months. A 3-0 defeat to Uruguay and a 3-2 defeat to Colombia, both at home, are particular highlights as of late and final defeats to the USA twice in 2021 in both the Nations League and the Gold Cup seriously harm their reputation for big games. Irrespective of that though, Mexico do have some incredible talent among them, with Guillermo Ochoa sure to provide cat-like protection in between the sticks, while Ajax duo Edson Alvarez and Jorge Sanchez will likely be on the team sheet. The experience of both Hector Herrera and Andres Guardado will bring maturity to the Mexican midfield, who will be looking to supply both Chucky Lozano and Raul Jimenez up front. Cole hero Javier Chicharito Hernandez was snubbed from the squad, but without any major injuries, Mexico have their best 11 out in Qatar. The Mexicans are eager to improve on their round of 16 finish in Russia four years ago where they were eliminated by Brazil, and this tournament provides an excellent opportunity to do so. However, spirits have been dampened in the Mexican camp as of late, and whether they can overcome this rut in time for their games in the group stage is a very intriguing prospect. Anyway, as for my personal predictions for Group C, and I'm not looking past Argentina here. I think they'll beat Poland and Saudi Arabia with relative ease and end up drawing against Mexico, who I'm putting down in second. From there, the battle between Poland and Saudi Arabia will really be the battle of who's more useless, and I think Poland win that. Saudi Arabia have looked relatively solid as of late, and I see them scraping ahead in third on goal difference, while I swear on my life they'll draw nil-nil with Poland. So Argentina first on seven points, Mexico second on seven due to a worse goal difference, while the other two both on one point each with Saudi Arabia coming third due to goal difference. Anyway, that's it for my preview and prediction of Group C of the 2022 World Cup. If you did enjoy, please be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to check out my first two previews and let me know what you think about this one in the comments down below and I'll see you next time.